Welcome to my virtual tour of the Pollinator Paradise Garden at Chatham Mills in Pittsburgh. I wanted to share what's happening at the garden during the month of May and show you some of my favorite plants and pollinators. The Pollinator Paradise Garden is a project of the Chatham County Center of North Carolina Cooperative Extension. This demonstration garden is designed to showcase pollinator habitat for the Piedmont of North Carolina. My name is Debbie Roos and I'm an agriculture agent with the Chatham County Center of North Carolina Cooperative Extension. I created the Pollinator Paradise Garden back in 2008 and it's since grown to include over 225 unique species of plants, 85% of them native to North Carolina. I maintain the garden organically with a small group of volunteers. I have two species of columbine in the pollinator garden, our native eastern wild columbine and then this golden columbine, which is Aquilegia chrysantha. It's native to southwestern U.S. The native downy wood mint, Blophilia ciliata, is one of my favorite spring bloomers. That beautiful periwinkle blue color looks good combined with almost anything. And the bumblebees love the downy wood mint. This leafcutter bee is enjoying the native white wild indigo, Baptisia alba. It's a great asset for any garden. It blooms a little bit later than our other native indigos and actually has a longer bloom period. This is a striking combination of the red fire pink Silene virginica with the southern sundrops Anithera fruticosa. I love that yellow and red together. This Carolina anole is perched on the broad leaf of a cup plant, Silphium perfoliatum. You can see he's kind of looking around to see what kind of food he might could grab out there. The foxglove beard tongue, Penstemon digitalis, is at peak bloom in May. Here it's combined with some society garlic and bee blossom and wild indigo. The bumblebees especially love the beard tongues. I love to see them going right up into the flowers. And here's a nice close-up of the bumblebee action. And when he flies into the second bloom, you can see that tongue inserted to get the nectar. Bumblebees aren't the only pollinators that like visiting penstemons. This is a surfeit fly on the penstemon digitalis. The monarch butterflies enjoy the purple cone flowers, Echinacea purpurea. The native Carolina lupin, Thermopsis villosa, is in my opinion an underutilized plant in local gardens. It blooms later than the wild indigos, although there's some overlap. But you can see that the bumblebees and other species of bees really like it. Here this bumblebee is foraging and you can see brush her brushing the pollen into her pollen baskets as she forages. Leafcutter bees also enjoy visiting the Carolina lupin, and you can see all the pollen on the underside of the abdomen on this leafcutter bee. The dramatic white blooms of the native Adam's needle, Yucca filamentosa, start opening up towards the end of May. Adam's needle is a beautiful evergreen plant year-round, and then of course looks very striking with its tall white flower stalks in bloom. Purple poppy mallow, Caleroeum volucrata, is native to the central U.S. and I include it in the garden because the bees absolutely love it. They're often swimming around inside the flowers and also love to get nectar from it. The native blue star, Amsonia tabernae montana, is at peak bloom in May and I love it seeing it here with a yellow lobed tick seed. You'll find many different pollinators on the blue star, including butterflies and bees like this leafcutter bee, and other pollinators like this zebra longhorn beetle. If you like warm colors, then you'll probably like this combo of the burgundy blanket flower, the orange butterfly weed, and the fuchsia poppy mallow. There's always a party on the orange butterfly weed. 
The monarch butterfly and the bumblebees don't seem to mind each other's company as they're busy foraging for nectar and pollen. The native purple milkweed, Asclepius purpurescens, looks nice combined with the red yarrow and the yellow lanceleaf coreopsis. The purple milkweed is just stunning as you can see that leaf has that purple midrib that echoes the color of the bloom. This young, small green lynx spider is perched on top of the yarrow looking for prey. I caught these two passionflower beetles mating on the tendrils of the native yellow passionflower, Passiflora lutea. One of my all-time favorite plants, Jopa weed or Eutrochium dubium, puts on a show even before the first flower makes an appearance. I always love seeing how the leaves take on a pinwheel shape as they're unfurling. And here's another plant that I think is beautiful even when it's not flowering. This is the dwarf indigo bush, Amorpha herbacea. And you can see the beautiful red flower buds. This monarch caterpillar is feeding on the native purple milkweed. Skunk meadowru, Thelictrum revolutum, is about six feet tall and has these beautiful showy tiny white flowers that attract a number of different pollinators. I caught this Carolina anole perched on a flower and peering into the Yarrow Forest. When you see a caterpillar in this J formation, you know it's preparing to form a chrysalis. This black swallowtail caterpillar had left its host plant of bronze fennel next to this shrub and decided to form its chrysalis on this eastern ninebark shrub. And the very next day I found this beautiful green chrysalis. Red ring milkweed, Asclepius variegata, is a beautiful native milkweed that prefers part shade. I just love the creamy white flowers. The wild indigos and blue star that started blooming in April are still going strong in May. This variegated fritillary caterpillar is munching on the leaf of its host plant, purple passionflower vine. How's that for a beautiful spring combo of wild indigo, yarrow, golden alexander, and columbine? If you look closely, you can spot the monarch caterpillar on this common milkweed, Asclepius syriaca. I like the combination of textures with the very coarse leaves of the milkweed mixed with a finer leaf of the spiderwort. Here's that monarch caterpillar feeding on the leaf of common milkweed. Their whole job as caterpillars is to eat and grow, and clearly this caterpillar takes its job very seriously. This tiny eastern-tailed blue butterfly was perched on the unopened flower buds of common milkweed. The native spiderwort Tradescantia ohiensis is always popular with both honeybees and bumblebees. And you can see the honeybee is really packing the pollen into those pollen baskets. The petals of this pale purple coneflower, Echinacea polita, are just starting to open up. That's why they look so thin. Beautiful combo of lots of wild indigos and Carolina lupin and garden heliotrope. This honeybee is just covered in pollen from foraging on the garden heliotrope, Valeriana officinalis. Now I could just watch leafcutter bees foraging on wild indigo all day. Notice as she's sipping nectar how she's rubbing her abdomen over the anthers which are covered in pollen. That's how the pollen gets stuck on the branched hairs or scopa on the underside of her abdomen. And then of course she takes that pollen back to the nest and that's what the young bees consume as they're developing. This is a bumblebee foraging on the wild indigo and it carries the pollen on its hind legs and pollen baskets. After the wild indigos have been pollinated by the bumblebees and the leafcutter bees, they form these beautiful seed pods. They make a nice sound in the fall when they dry. It sounds like a rattle when the wind blows. New Jersey tea, Ceanothus americanus, is an excellent deciduous native shrub for the pollinator garden. 
Not only do the bumblebees love it, but you'll find lots of other pollinators, quite a bit of diversity from other bees and butterflies to beetles and flower flies and more. Here's a wider shot of one of the parking lot islands in the pollinator garden. And wherever I can, I try to squeeze in that downy wood mint. It looks really great combined with the purple poppy mallow. We have mostly full sun at the pollinator garden, but in this corner, I've got a little bit of part shade, which allowed me to squeeze in these native oak leaf hydrangeas. Another parking lot island showing quite a bit of diversity. I like this combo of the wild quinine Parthenium integrifolium mixed with the orange butterfly weed and the burgundy lance leaf blanket flower. Wild quinine is also called American feverfew. It has a really unusual white flower. For a short period of time in May, the Adams needle puts on quite the show with these tall, dramatic white flower stalks. But I don't mind that it's relatively short lived because I think the foliage looks wonderful year round. Here's a view of the trellis bed where we've erected a cedar trellis to showcase our native vines. If I have a little bit of shade or part shade, I'm going to try to tuck in one of these. This is the native Indian pink, Spigelia mirilandica. It's just beautiful. And it gets lots of visitors from hummingbirds to bumblebees. Thank you for joining me for my virtual garden tour. I hope you've enjoyed it. Don't forget to check out my pollinator garden website. You'll find hundreds of photos and videos, bloom list and plant list, and lots of resources to help you with your pollinator gardening efforts. See you next month.